noticing that so many of you are looking forward to some reviews on a new style before you make a purchase, I'm gonna go ahead and take this fresh out of the box for you. This is Raquel Welch's, uh, part of Raquel Welch's signature collection. That means that it's uh, one of their premium selections that usually has a full monofilament top, lace features, and so forth. Even hand-tied caps are included in this collection. They use the Memory Cap 3, which is the ultra premium uh, collection. We'll go through that in a minute. Um, but take a look at this style. I'm really anticipating this style. That's why I made the purchase because I feel like this is probably right up my alley. Uh, shorter length, loose wavy curl, very modern. And look at that color, shaded biscuit. It's very dimensional, a very dimensional blonde. I actually like that better than I do the RL 1723 SS. It seems to have a little bit more dimension and it's more dynamic. So let's go ahead and take a look at this cap. So you'll see that temple to temple lace front. It does run uh, extended back into the ear tab. A seam that divides that into the monofilament top, a single monofilament top, very soft and pliable. Open wefted uh, sides and back on this one, a closed velvet ear tab. And then a velvet nape with Velcro adjusters. And you'll notice there's some silicone on the, on the uh, weftings there. And that just makes it for a nice, secure, comfortable, and even customized feel on the fit. Okay, so now it's time for me to apply this style fresh out of the box. Okay, so right away, I know that this is cap is going to be large on me at a 21 and a quarter inch circumference. So I will have to uh, make some adjustments to, to get a secure fit. I'm also going to have to change that part around a little bit there in the front, just so that it doesn't hang in my face while I'm trying to do the review. So I just took a couple of minutes time out here to go ahead and remove the tags. I shook it out real good. I worked that part according to my taste. So typically I like to part mine just left of center, nothing too wide of a part, because then that leaves a, a large curtain bang on one side that tends to swoop in and into my face. So I like parting it just left of center, and then I use the heat from my hand to develop a little bit of, a little more contour off of that lace front. Now these front pieces are about 10 inches, so there is a lot of length there around the face that stretches about three inches below my chin. So in the back though, you're gonna find a nine inch crown and that meets up with a three and a half inch nape. Now that does create a little bit of an angle. So you've got that nine inch crown, three and a half inch nape, about a six inch layer here on the sides, and then that uh, goes down into a 10 inch front. So there is a bit of an angular cut here. Now what I love about this is that the nape is so practical because it stays well above the collar, which is wonderful for a longevity for these heat friendly fibers. I also love how it's a little bit beveled in the back. So you've got a little bit of stacking, just a wee bit of stacking and the nape actually naturally just curls out a little bit. It hugs the nape and curls out. I'm gonna go ahead and take off this jacket. I'm gonna go outside here in a moment um, and it's really cold today. So I'll take the jacket off so that I can show you all the way around. So see how that nape is actually curls up a little? So I think that's cute. I think it delivers some amazing coverage back there and uh, gives a nice little choppy texture. So Unfiltered is just so unstructured, so messy, so bohemian. This is totally unlike anything I've seen from Raquel Welch. Uh, Raquel Welch is usually a little more uh, conservative, a little more sophisticated in their styling. Um, so I really love the edginess of this style. It kind of fits my personality a little better. This is a part of the signature collection, which includes that full temple to temple, extended lace front, and single monofilament top. The lace front is done impeccably as I would expect. Uh, from this brand. I mean, they even do a great job with all the sewing and the splicing of fiber into that hairline. It's just impeccable. 
And then no matter where you part it on the top, you're going to see the illusion of scalp. So I do have some bright sunshine coming in the window this morning. And so I'm going to put up some clips of this color. We've all seen Shaded Biscuit before. Um, this particular one is super beautiful. It has a lot more platinum around the face than what I have seen before. So here's an in-depth look at Shaded Biscuit RL 1923 as it appears on the style Unfiltered by Raquel Welch. You can see all of this dimension. So the base color here appears to be like a sandy, a light sandy brown. There seems to be some honey mixed in. And then it's very heavily highlighted with an ash blonde and some platinum that really lightens and brightens it up. And the root on this one is well done. It's a medium brown root. It doesn't appear to be too starkly dark against some of these lighter pieces. So let's drill down on this style. So it's basically a, was a straight bob style cut and then it's kind of sprinkled with these choppy tapered uh, waves. So it's just sprinkled on top with these choppy tapered waves. There's a lot of underwave to it, meaning there's a lot of body to the, uh, to the fiber underneath that gives it structure and form. And then you've got these bohemian type pieces all the way around. A little bit of separa separation in the back. It almost looks like a little shaggy cut in the back. I think this is gonna be excellent for summer. And I may even consider ordering this in another color. So one other thing is that I've noticed is that if you're not a big fan of these very long front pieces, they could easily be trimmed. Um, you could actually make this into more of a, a same length all the way around, shorter bob style cut. Now what I think I'm going to do is take a, um, like a hot airbrush and sort of smooth out and around on these longer front pieces because what they're like, they're very stringy. And that just goes with the consistency of this texture. They're tapered and separated, but it does come across a little bit stringy here in the front. So if you took a, uh, like a hot air brush and just made them a little more cohesive, I think I would probably like that effect quite a bit. These fibers are uh, more fine than I'm used to coming out of that Raquel Welch uh, True to Life fiber collection. Um, they just seem to be a little more fine, which gives way to a lot of flyaways. I mean, I was just fluffing this a little bit as I was uh, working the front a little, and I just saw all these flyaways. Now, the weather is very dry and cold right now. That may change as the humidity returns and along with some warmer weather, um, but they do seem to be fine. And like a, a style like Beltress even, with the finer fibers, they're very realistic. Um, they're much like human hair and they're not at, sh at all shiny, but you will suffer with some flyaways. I simply just gave it a squirt of water and kind of scrunched it in and let it dry. And actually that's going to bring out the texture even more. So the density is just an average density on this style. It weighs about 3.75 ounces. It's just an average, nice, realistic amount of hair fiber on this and you will find some permatease. Now the permatease is located in the very same spots as you would find it in on the editor's pick, all around that mono top, crown, and back. Um, none of the nape, that nape is meant to be a little bit of a slimmer profile, and then you will find it heavy right there at the temple. Now while we're comparing this to something like the editor's pick, I don't feel there's as much permatease uh, on this sample piece that I have as compared to all the other editor's picks that I've had. The editor's picks seems to have, be a little more heavy on the permatease. So I think this is very well done, just propping it up in all the right places, making it full in all the right places without overdoing it. So I think what I'd love to start doing is sort of comparing uh, the style right out of the box, like it is, to the manufacturer's photos. So what struck me different from uh, what the manufacturer's photos suggested the manufacturer's photos kind of suggested that it wasn't um, as flyaway. It wasn't as PC as this it, it as this really is. It's very messy, and if you want a really sort of a sophisticated, uh, put together look like it suggests in the photos, I think you're going to need some product to kind of hold these waves together to achieve that look.
So let's talk about some styling for unfiltered. Now, right out of the box, you're absolutely gonna have to love this texture because it really wants to return to this texture no matter what you do with it. Now, it is heat friendly. We talked about maybe using a hot air brush or something to make a little bit of a softer curl, especially around those front pieces. But this really meant, is meant to be unstructured, very bohemian, and very piecey. Let's try here with glasses first. Okay, I have a, a little bit of a chunkier arm on those glasses and you know they fit very nicely between the ear and the ear tab. So I think with this style, I mean, I don't think there's enough length in the back to get any kind of ponytail or updo, but you can always fake it because of these really long sides. You can just really fake an updo by just putting some pins in, pulling it up and away or on top. A lot you can do there. I think I'll focus on bringing the hair away from the face to show off the beautiful hairline as well as sort of experimenting with that parting space. Thanks so much for joining me today for a look at a brand new style for spring 2020 by Raquel Welch. And this one is called Unfiltered in the color Shaded Biscuit. See you next time on Taz's Wig Closet at Wig Studio One.